Not your man. I don't want to talk about it. If, on the other hand, you have any questions whatsoever regarding the quality of a fine pair of pants, look Just no further. Just about it, I'm getting a mic. Pants, in. that's what I know. I know pants. All oh, kinds of pants. I had a day. Let me tell you something. So then he says to me, oh, yeah? What about Your chinos? Stuff it was for yeah. those Hebrew slaves in ancient <laughs> Egypt. Yeah. Chinos, yeah, I know chinos. Those slaves were in Disneyland compared to working in a travel agency. Then ask me about yeah. jeans. Please, I grew up on jeans. Uh, Mom. You know, I'm sure being whipped while you're building a pyramid is no bargain. Then he bargain. brings up overalls. Now he's insulting me. But those slaves didn't have to book the Himmelmans non-stop to Boca during Einstein the Easter knew arithmetic, <laughs> Pavarotti knows singing, and I know pants. North was positive he was having a coronary. I said, do you know who I am? Now, as a rule, 11-year-olds don't experience cardiac events. Well, in case you forgot, let me remind you who I am. But for North, this was a very stressful time. I'm number six! <laughs> yes, North was having a difficult time with his folks. And it was putting a damper on what was, in all other respects, a very successful life. How successful? Well, look at the year he'd had. Photosynthesis, the process by which carbohydrates are formed in the chlorophyll containing tissues of plants exposed to sunlight. Outstanding year by anyone's standards. But did North's folks appreciate how special he was? Hardly. Dad! 
Dad. You hear me? I'm number six, and I was inspecting pants before you even started wearing them, Mr. Vice President, only because your father oh. owns the company. Oh, God forbid the Himmelman should stop over in Atlanta. Like I that said would I kill forgot him. more about belt loops than you'll ever know. See this rash? You see it? Him all men. There's no ointment. Yeah, see, let me Not tell you, so let me remind you who you're talking to. <laughs> Only this year's recipient of the coveted Mr. Inseam Award. <laughs> well, that shut him up. Dad, you know what that stupid whistle did to me today? I saw some blood in my stool this morning. <laughs> What's the matter, yeah, it's the Here, loosen his what? pants. No, 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 I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm okay. But North wasn't okay. This parent thing was starting to affect every aspect of his life. It's turning into the wind. What sense does that it's make? It's not a... Uh... Maybe it's supposed to show us where the wind was. What are we supposed to do with that information? To be or not to... B. Oh. B. Four, four. Six in a row. Time out. How are you doing? I don't get it. A child is born. He's given a life. But then, he's appreciated by everyone except the folks who gave him that life. It's just not right. Uh, let me rephrase the question. How's the arm? Mr. Blankman, I've got some problems that I have to work out. Problems? You? North? So, while everyone speculated as to what could possibly be bothering last season's most valuable player, North left the field and headed straight for his secret spot. Yes, North had a secret spot. You know the kind of spot I'm talking about. A place that's just ordinary to everyone else, but for some reason is special only to you. Because no matter where it is, this is the spot where you can go and feel that you're away from everyone and everything. The spot where you can go and do your best thinking. The one place where you can go to reflect upon what was, mull over what is, or just sit back, close your eyes, and change the world into whatever you wish it could be. Now, it's my guess that even North couldn't remember when his spot first revealed its special powers to him. Nor did it even matter at this point. What was important was, whenever he sat in that huge armchair, he looked like any other kid just waiting for his parents to finish their Easter shopping. And he was sitting on that very spot the first time I saw him. Why don't they like me? What did I do wrong? You OK, kid? Yeah. Good. Because I only got a 10-minute break. <sighs> My back is killing me. The last thing I need is to listen to somebody else's problems. <sighs> you hungry? No, thanks. Good. Because I'm starving, and this is my last carrot. So, who are you? I'm North. Seen your name on maps. Very impressive. Who are you? An Easter Bunny. Third floor, toys. Oh. At least until Sunday, that is. And then what do you do? Whatever I want. Independently wealthy. Fourth of July, might be Uncle Sam. Christmas, maybe Santa Claus. My life's a holiday. How about yours? Not lately. I had a real bad game today. How bad? I walked nine Panthers and hit my coach's wife with a wild pitch. That's bad. What, do you got something on your mind? Well, what is it? I thought you didn't want to hear anyone else's problems. You always believe everything a stranger tells you? Come on, spill. Ah, uh, you wouldn't understand. Try me. It's my folks. Yeah? What about them? I don't know. All they care about is themselves. Selfish folks. That is rough. They don't know what a good thing they got in you, right? Exactly. And they're the only ones. You should hear what all the other parents say about me. North's room is always clean. North always looks both ways. 
North never spoils his appetite. North flosses. Holy mackerel, your folks are sitting on a gold mine. Tell me about it. You realize, of course, that you're not alone. What do you mean? Look, kid, just because I'm in a bunny suit doesn't mean I haven't stumbled across a basic truth now and then. The feeling of being insufficiently appreciated is a common childhood lament. I'm not common. Of course you're not. But I will bet you that even Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who wrote a symphony by the age of three, mind you, had more than a few evenings then with an angry parent yelling, stop banging on that damn piano and go to bed, Mozart. Yeah, fine. But Mr. Mozart's dead and I'm alive. So I'll bet you that right now I'm in a lot more pain than he is. Hard to argue with that one. At this point, I even settle for Mozart's parents. Well, unfortunately, you don't get to make that choice, kid. The one thing that we cannot control in this life is who our parents are. You dealt the hand, you're stuck with it. It's not like baseball, where if you don't like the deal you have with one team, you can become a free agent and try to get a better deal with another team. Another team? This is real life, kid. The rules are different. Listen, I gotta get back upstairs. <sighs> if you want my advice, and I know you didn't ask for it, go home, make up, and goodbye. And that was it. Nothing special. I just left him there in that secret spot of his. Just him and his thoughts. Free agent. What a scoop! A kid becoming a free agent, then going around offering his services as a devoted son to the highest bidding set of parents. It's brilliant, North! Mwah! Simply brilliant! Look, this still isn't for sure yet. You know, this could be my Watergate. Winchell, you put out a two-page leaflet with a circulation of 90. Might even land me the Pulitzer. Hey, I told you this idea because you're my friend, not because you're editor of the school newspaper. I'm a journalist, North. So? So? You never said this conversation was off the record. Winchell, I need time to think. All right, all right. I'll hold the story. But, North, a few more displays like that Panther game, and some of the more attractive parents might start doing some thinking of their own. The damn Panther game. And, North, that geography test we took today, what about it? You got a 34. Huh? Chicago's in Africa. Mexico's an island off the coast of Montana. Where'd you get this? I'm a journalist, North. I can't reveal my sources. Besides, how I got this test is not important. But why you got this grade is. Your instincts are correct, old buddy. You need new parents, and you need them now. Unless. Unless what? Unless you haven't got the guts to go through with it. Winchell, I've got more guts than anybody in this town. And you know it. And talk is cheap. I just feel that I owe it to my parents to give them one last chance. What can I say? You came to me. You sought my counsel. Rest is up to you. No, no that's OK. Thanks anyway. Yes, North wanted to give his folks every chance to keep the family together. He tried to reach his mom, but she was too busy rerouting the Himmelmans. That left Dad. Pants, can I help you? Hello. My name is North. Can I talk to my dad? What number? Number six. Well, it looks like that five iron's gonna be a little... Number six! Number six! Yeah. Phone call for you. Oh, <laughs> uh, from Susan. Get a number, would you? It's your son. Oh, uh, all right, just a minute. Is that piping holding up? Very well, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> now he's an expert at piping. Hello? Hello, Dad. Can I talk to you for a minute? Yes, sir. Oh, we need these by five. <laughs> I only got two legs here. North. I'm swamped. Could we discuss this over dinner, son? But, Dad... All right, we'll discuss it over dinner. Yeah, right. Dinner. Well, that's that. OK, guys, let's roll. Zoe, you take the south side. Adam, create the Winchell! 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 Here you go. Here you go. I've made my decision. Don't tell me. Let me guess. How did you know? 
News travels fast. Apparently. I'm proud of you, kid. You got a lawyer? Why? Do I need one? North. This is America. Everyone needs a lawyer. Lucky for you, I happen to know the best. Name's Arthur Belt. He's done some work for me, pro bono. Let's move it! Where will I find this Arthur Belt? Don't worry, he'll find you. Come on! We got a paper to get out! Arthur Bell, at your service. The lawyer? Your lawyer. Now, from now on, we are a team. You do what I tell you to do, you say what I tell you to say before you know it. You're gonna have the best parents in the world. What do you say, kid? Sure you can squeeze me in? What? Oh, the, <laughs> the ambulance chasing thing. <laughs> That's nothing. I just use it to beat the traffic. You tried some time in your bike. Now, what do you say, kid? Are we a team? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, 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 you know so. Yes, North was actually going to go through with it and challenge the... Now then, let me remind you, this is a trial, this is not a hearing. Even though both sides will be saying things and I will be hearing them, it is still not a hearing. No doubt, you'll all be hearing the same things that I am hearing. That's your privilege. However, once both sides have been heard, then it'll be my job to pass judgment. Obviously, you can all pass judgment too, but it won't count. That's because I am the one who is the judge. Have I made myself clear to the plaintiff? Yes, Your Honor, it is quite clear to the plaintiff. Very good. Have I made myself clear to the defense? Your Honor, the defense rests. Then there's nothing left for me to do but make my judgment. And in my judgment, any folks who would sleep through a trial like this are folks who don't deserve to have a wonderful, upstanding son like North. I rule in favor of the plaintiff. Yes! 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 Oh, yes! The system works, Snark. You're a free man. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Israel was in Egypt land. Let my hold people it. Hold go. It down. Everybody. Hey, hey. Hold hold down. Down. Hey. Even though I have made a judgment, the trial is not over. I still have to make a ruling. Now then, today is... July 1st. Today is July 1st, and it is my ruling that North choose his new parents by Labor Day so he can begin school with his new family. If he does not choose new parents, there's the option of returning to his original parents. However, if he is not physically in the arms of either his new parents or his original parents by noon on Labor Day, he will be remanded to an orphanage. And if any of you has ever seen the little rascals, ho, 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 you know that's no day at the beach. Orphanage? Not to worry. 
I'm telling you, kid, from now on, the world is your oyster. Even though North didn't really care for oysters, he couldn't help but take Arthur Belt's enthusiasm as a positive sign. North Reagent Draft, good morning. North Reagent Draft, good morning. No, he won't good morning. Be available. Yes, his eyes are blue. Soprano. Super Mario 3. The backstroke. Yes, he believes in God and evolution. Don't even get him started on the Warren Commission. North Reagent Draft. Oh, everyone wants you, kid, everyone. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> you got a first-class ticket to every city in the world. <laughs> now, I have to advise you, don't spread yourself too thin. It's important you learn as much as you can about each set of parents that you audition. Because once you sign with someone, that's it. They are your new folks forever, you understand? You bet. <laughs> that's the spirit. Look at that boy. Well, hey, howdy, North. I'm Paul Texas. Here's Ma Tex. Howdy. And welcome to the great state of Texas. Uh, howdy. I know what you're thinking. Big call, right? Well, it did cross my mind. Everything I own is the biggest and the best. That's why we'd like you to become our son. Because you're the best. To the best. Oh, sweet home. This can all be yours, son. Main house, guest house, livestock, all wells. Rumor has it you like baseball. It's my favorite. You know, I used to own the Houston Astros. Really? What happened? Just this morning, I signed them over to you. Uh, gee, don't get me wrong. They're a fine organization, but aren't we rushing things just a little? <laughs> I finished up all my chores. I figured I'd get a little shooting in. No, I'm, I mean, have you ever been an Easter Bunny? <laughs> Easter Bunny? Careful, son. Gabby's killed men for less than that. Oh, sorry. No harm done. So, what you two cowpokes got planned for tomorrow? Well, I reckon we'll wake up early and eat. And then we'll dig for oil and eat. And then we'll rope some doggies, bust a few bronchs, and then maybe we'll grab a bite to eat. You like Tex-Mex? Uh, sure. I'm a huge fan of any food that straddles two borders. <laughs> That's my boy. But, uh, can I ask you what the deal is with all this eating? Oh, simple. Remember before when I told you everything I own is the biggest and the best? Well, you're already the best. Now there's nothing left but to make you the biggest. And don't you fret about not being able to clean up your plate. Why, pretty soon that stomach of yours will stretch and stretch, and your capacity for food will just grow and grow. Excuse me. You say that like that's a good thing to have happened to your stomach. It is. Why? Well, then you'll be like Buck. Who? Our first son. The biggest boy this big state's ever seen. Why, he can eat more in one day than anyone else could eat in a whole month. That's why Buck hated February. Where is Buck? He died in a stampede. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, needless to say, it was a mighty big loss. Yeah, but now we'd like to show you how much we're looking forward to having you as our new son. Ready, Paul? Ready, Ma. We had a son who was trampled by a ton of longhorns. 
suits. But you're here cutes to fill his boots as flat as they may be. You'll yell your P.I.O. at the rodeo till the day's done. Then you'll make a lot of pals with buffalo gals. Just leave some for me. Hey there! We'll barbecue sticks and stew, feed you pumpkin pie. Till you can, bigger than the big old Texan sky. You'll grow more on a chain of stores, Mary Betty Lou. Oh, North, North, North Roma. Another rib, son? I'm sorry, but it wouldn't be fair to any of us. Well, thanks for the opportunity, North. Oh, sir? Yes, no. I think it's only right that I give you back the Astros. Well, thanks, son. That's a class gesture. Well, bye. So long, part. We'll miss you. Hold on there, son. a little something to remember your old buddy Gabby by. Hope it brings you good luck. Thanks. So, North resumed his search. And though he got to the airport by noon, out of respect for Ma and Pa Tex, and true cowboy tradition, he chose to wait eight hours so he could fly off into the sunset, with no knowledge at all of what was going on back home. How much longer do we have to put up with this indignity? longer must we tolerate these injustices? The subservient. Yeah. It's humiliating, my friends. It's demeaning. Right on. Now is the time to say no. Now is the time to say, just because you were born 25 or 30 years before me doesn't make you smart. It doesn't make you right. It just makes you old. Right it just makes you smell worse in the morning. Yeah. Viva Norte! 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 Vi
But like I said, North didn't know about any of this. He was on his way to Hawaii to meet what he hoped would be his brand new parents. Governor and Mrs. Ho? Aloha, North. Welcome to our island paradise, North. Aloha. We got a big day planned for you. Wacky Wacky will take you up to the house so you can change. OK. Aloha. Aloha? I thought that meant hello. Uh, in Hawaii, aloha means hello and goodbye. Doesn't that get confusing? Only when you're firing someone. Oh, well, aloha. Isn't he great? North. If you settle here, you'll be many years younger because of the difference in time zones. Which means that you won't die as early as you would if you lived on the mainland. That's a plus. Another thing, North, if you live in Hawaii, it's much easier to get into a good college. How's that? Well, here in the islands, we have only 12 letters in our alphabet. Really? That's right. Five vowels. A E I O U. Seven consonants. H K L M N P W. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, sure. Just think about it. Waikiki, Honolulu. Kaanapali, Mauna Lani. Well, that's very interesting. But how does that help me get into college? Well, since we don't use the letters B, C, D, and F, you're pretty much guaranteed to get straight A's. What do you think? Well, I like what I see. But I do have one question, just for my own peace of mind. What is it? Uh, I hope I'm not being insensitive, but you wouldn't happen to have a dead kid whose shoes you want me to fill, would you? Dead kid? North, Hawaii is a lush and fertile land. In fact, there's only one barren area on all of our islands. Unfortunately, it's... Mrs. Ho. But if all goes right, you will be our first child. Wow. What a great day. You know, this might really work out. As far as I'm concerned, there's just a few minor details to discuss. You know, bedtime, sleepovers, your views on snacks, that sort of thing. Well, what are we standing here for? Let's go inside and push a few numbers around. Huh? See what we come up with. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor and Mrs. Ho. Hey, hey, oi. Como mai kai e ku aloha e. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow 50th staters. I am thrilled to announce that we have reached an agreement in principle which allows me to introduce to you today a young man who in the coming years will be to Hawaii what the peach is to Georgia, what the apple is to New York, and what the wind is to Chicago. Now, without further ado, please give a big, warm Hawaiian welcome to our new pride and joy, our son, North. That'll be in every airport along every highway. My crack? My crack is going to be shown at every airport? Now, son. What gives you the right to show my crack in every highway? See, the truth is, North, I, 
I'm the governor of a state that's running a little low on self-esteem. After 35 years of statehood, people still don't treat Hawaii like we're part of the country. Sure, there's a star for us on the flag, but why didn't anyone show up during Hands Across America? I mean, we waited for days and not even a phone call to tell us nobody was coming. It's just plain inconsiderate. He's right. People from the mainland just don't care about Hawaii. They come here with their knobby knees and their pale kids and they eat our food and watch our whales and say aloha like they really mean it. But then seven to ten days later, they drop us like a sack of rancid poi and go home. And we're supposed to feel good about ourselves? Excuse me, but what does this have to do with my crack? Oh, don't you see, North? If you lived here in Hawaii, people would be more inclined to settle here. So they can be close to my crack? North, North, you're very important to us. I don't know. I, I need some time to think, OK? Come on, guys, don't just stand there, get your body in motion. You might just like it. And squat, down, up, and What down, is the point? One more time. Out. Gabby, and what are you doing here? Yeah, they say for every hour you exercise, you got an hour to your life. Come on. Who needs all that extra time if you're just going to spend it exercising? You see where I'm going with this, Junior? Who's Gabby? He's a ranch hand from Texas. Not familiar with the gentleman. So. How's it feel to be Hawaii's new first son? Well, I'm not so sure that's what I want to be. Why not? Beautiful climate. Can't beat the fashion. Yeah, I know. But I don't think I should settle for parents who have to show my most private crevice on a billboard to make them feel better about themselves. Uh, it's refreshing to meet a kid that has such strong convictions about his crack. Oh! Oh! Dig, man. The way I always figured this deal is, it's the parents that are supposed to make the kids feel better, not the other way around. Yeah. Hang in there, kid. You'll find what you're looking for. I hope so. Although he came up short in both Texas and Hawaii, North felt no anxiety as he still had eight weeks till his Labor Day deadline. Welcome to Juneau, Alaska. Please remain seated until the plane comes to a complete stop in Anchorage, Alaska. To accompany our skid, we will be showing you another full-length feature film. Our friend had a dream, and that dream is becoming a reality. Meanwhile, as North was skidding his way to Anchorage, things were heating up at home. Winchell's inspirational speeches had created a groundswell. And all across the land, the kids were continuing to hold their parents at emotional gunpoint. Anything else, son? Yes. How's my room coming along? I'll have it spotless by dinner. Viva El Norte. And as of next Monday, no parent will be permitted to see an R-rated movie unless accompanied by a kid. Yeah, right. Arthur, do I have to take a note of melancholy? It's just that North still hasn't found new parents. Maybe he never will. Maybe this free agency thing will just blow up in our face. I'm surprised at you, Arthur. Do you think I would actually embark on an endeavor of this magnitude without a contingency plan? Contingency plan? Oh, good. I love those. One Coca-Cola, right here. And one Sex on the Beach. Aren't I naughty? To our future. And what a future it is. According to the latest polls, parents are so nervous that 78% of them say they will vote however their kids tell them to. And since those kids will do whatever you tell them to, well, I, uh, <laughs> what I mean is... That's right. I'm lying here with the next president of the United States. <laughs> I'm happy for you, Arthur. I'm sure you'll make a fine commander-in-chief. A doll face. Could you concentrate on my lower back? That's where all my tension builds up. Hey, great landing, guys. You really got that skit thing down to a science. Well, thanks for the kind words, North. I'm not saying that we haven't done it at a terminal now and then, but after a while, you pretty much get the hang of it. 
<laughs> Thanks. <laughs> North's first impression of Alaska was a positive one. The air was clean, it was breathtakingly beautiful, and best of all, it was far away from everyone and everything. So there was nothing to distract these people from concentrating on life's most precious commodity, the love of a good family. And to go with that, our state dish, Eskimo pie. Thank you. Well, hey, what do you know? The salmon are running. I'm going to get a couple of poles and go fishing with my boy. Great. I love fishing. Okay. This is a life, right, son? Sure is. You like Christmas, North? Who does it? Well, you've never had a Christmas till you've had an Alaskan Christmas. That's right. And since our days last for months at a time, you could just imagine the festivities. Why, opening the presents takes uh, three weeks alone, right, Mom? <laughs> oh, this all sounds great, but what's the catch? Well, what do you mean? I mean, what's in it for you? Nothing. Really? No dead kids? No low self-esteem? No frozen skeletons in your closet? <laughs> <laughs> we have pride, North. And we're proud of our pride. We wouldn't ask anything of a child. All we want is for you to follow your dreams and be the best North you can be. We know you'll be a source of great pride to the entire Eskimo community for many, many years to come. <laughs> oh, jeepers, creepers, that reminds me. Oh, Dad, let's go. Time to flow. Coming. Time to what? OK, bundle up. It's a long walk. Who's that? North? This is your new grandfather. Hello, North. Hello. What do you mean it's time to flow? Well, when an Eskimo gets too old or weak to contribute to society, the whole family gets together and everybody walks to the ocean. That's right. And then the revered old Eskimo is proudly placed on an ice floe and set out to sea so he can die with dignity. And pride. All right, everybody, let's go. But wait a minute. Just because he's old doesn't mean he can't be part of the family. Well, it's a tradition. I promise you, North, Grandpa wants this just as much as anyone. Right, Grandpa? Yeah, right. I, I've been looking forward to this. As the family made their long trek to the sea, North took the opportunity to get close to his new grandpa, which was easy since he had a tremendous affection for old folks. He found them to be warm, understanding, and most importantly, way too tired to yell. Knowing that his time with grandpa was limited, North tried to take in all that this wise old man had to offer about life in the tundra. And another thing, up here, if your mother says don't make a face because it could freeze in that position, you better take her seriously. Jeez. Can you hang around a little longer? There's so much you can teach me. Next. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Okay, okay, okay. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Come on, let's go. Let's go. I only got four months of sunlight here. Move it. Next. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Should have done this before. I got a civilization around here. Can you move it along, please? Thank you. Next. Let's go. Don't act like you don't know what's going on here. Come on, let's go. Come on, please. Well, goodbye, North. Are you sure you have to go? Oh, don't worry about him, North. He's had a great life, and he's happy to set sail before he starts embarrassing himself. Yeah, take it from us, North. When drool hardens, it's not a pretty sight. But... But, 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 come on, let's go, pal. This is no surprise to you, is it? You know where you're going. Take a walk. Come on, let's go. Move it along. Let's go. 
Yeah, yeah, bye, bye, bye. Fine, thank you. Bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Bye. Listen, if there's a change in policy in the next couple of weeks, feel free to track me down. What do you say? Hey, what do you say we grab a ride home? Hey, that's a great idea. North, don't worry about Grandpa. He'll be okay. Yeah. Can I ride on top? Why, sure. It's the best view. Landscape sure is beautiful up here. Hey, it's you. No, it's not. Oh. Smell that fresh air. No smog up here. How could they do that? Not even my original parents would send my grandpa away like that. Hey, son, how's the view up there? Great. Thanks. Son. You know, I don't want to overstep my bounds, but unless I'm mistaken, you're that fella north. And unless I'm further mistaken, you have a deadline of Labor Day, which is a week from tomorrow, to choose new parents. And unless I'm mistaken even further, you still haven't found what you're looking for. How could Labor Day be next week? I just got here. You walk from your house to the ice flows, right? Yeah. It's a seven-week walk, even with the wind at your back. No wonder we stopped for lunch 49 times. Ah, I don't feel bad. It's that six months of daylight thing. It throws everybody off. I myself only showered 12 times during the 70s. Oh, man. I'll never find new parents. Unless I misinterpret the ruling, you can always go back to your original parents. Oh, yeah. That's just what I want to do. Go back to the people who haven't even tried to contact me in over eight weeks. Take me to the airport. I've got a lot to do and not much time to do it. You got it. Yeah! So a now desperate North, with time running out, raced towards an uncertain future. Understandably, he was upset that his parents hadn't called in two months. What he couldn't know, however, was that his parents hadn't done much of anything in two months. As curator of the Smithsonian Institution, it is my distinct honor to unveil the newest addition to our illustrious Hall of Achievement. At 78 consecutive days and counting, the longest simultaneous coma in medical history, ladies and gentlemen, North's folks. I'll now take questions. Yes, how can you equate a medical oddity with man's landing on the moon? With all due respect to the achievements of the Apollo 11 crew, the sociological impact of what these folks did dwarfs those of Mr. Armstrong et al. But all they did was faint. And in so doing, shifted the familiar. This G will calm you down. Despite North's growing concern about his approaching deadline, he did take solace in the fact that the Lord needed only six days to create the entire universe. Certainly, a kid of his caliber, given an extra couple of days, should be able to find two measly parents. Greetings, North. I'm thy new father. And this good woman who art my wife are thy new mother. And these are thy new brothers who art named Ezekiel. And these are thy new brothers who art named Art. Hey, hey, this looks great. I have always dreamt of a life without the ever-present nuisance of electricity. Uh, uh, just let me grab something from the plane. I seem to have left my butter churn in the overhead compartment. <laughs> Floor it! 
While it was not like North to make snap judgments, there were only seven days left, and he had a world full of potential parents to evaluate. Rahi sana umafik. You seem like very nice folks. But to be totally honest with you, I lived here. Not sure I'd get much homework done. to go before his 12 noon Labor Day deadline. North, the little world traveler, arrived in New York today to interview his final set of parents, Ward and Donna Nelson, who along with their two children, Bud and Laura, live in the quaint upstate town of Bedford. When contacted earlier at his office, Ward, the local pediatrician, who we understand still makes house calls, said my family and I would like nothing better than to see North's long journey finally be rewarded with a warm and loving home. And we hope we can provide it for him. Thanks. Hi, North. Ward, Bud, Laura, he's here. He's here. <laughs> Hi, North. Hi. Hello. Welcome to our home, son. Oh, come on in, you tired? Hungry? Mom and I baked you some chocolate chip cookies. Do you like Nintendo? Yeah. Today at Mount Rushmore, thousands of angry parents gathered to voice their opposition to the bill that would lower the voting age to seven. According to Arthur Belt, the rising politician who drafted the bill. Oh, wait! They were talking about me. Relax, Arthur. Before you know it, you'll be hearing your name so much, even you'll be sick of it. I highly doubt it. Talk to me. Of course, it's Al with the sleeping dogs. Yeah, what about them? Looks like they counted their last sheep. So it does. How long will it take to get Operation Xerox into place? Less than a minute, boss. Go to it. And Al? Yeah, boss. Don't be surprised if there's a couple extra zeros in your next paycheck. Thanks, boss. I really appreciate it. And Al? Yeah, boss. Don't be surprised if there isn't. I understand. Good morning. Where are we? Where's our son? Oh, can we see our son? Absolutely. Just follow me. We got a limo waiting for you outside with coffee and some nice hot Danish. Oh, that sounds good. I won't lie to you. I seem to have worked up a bit of an appetite. Honey? I could eat. Right this way. Hi. Okay, Laura, sack the quarterback. Here we go. Hey. Oh. My socks, North. Great catch, buddy. Come and get it. Oh, here we go. It's so great having you here, North. I've always wanted a brother to throw to. Yeah, and now I have two big brothers to look out for me. Hey, I know we're all excited to have North as part of our family, 
but he hasn't decided if he wants to stay with us yet. Come on, North, you gotta stay. Yeah, we really want you. Help yourself, everybody. Dig in. Yeah. Mom, can we go to the carnival tomorrow? Yeah, can we? I don't see why not. Ward? Sounds good to me. North, we miss you so much. Please forgive us. We made so many mistakes. We should have appreciated you more. If only you could give us just one more chance. We love you, son. We love you very much. Cut! Very nice, very, very nice. Touching, moving, and yet not over the top. Keep it rolling. So, crazy summer, huh? Ugh, terrible. Very disturbing. Look, I know what you're going through. But even if North doesn't come back, he can always adopt. Just the other day, I met this adorable little boy, seven years old. His name was Hugh. Maybe you can adopt him. Maybe Hugh can be your son. We don't want Hugh. He's not our son. We want North. I understand. It was insensitive of me to even bring it up. Uh, you folks want some more coffee? Nah, that's OK. Not for me. Well, I still don't understand why we can't speak to North in person. I think that would be a big mistake. North is very angry right now. He's very sensitive. You show up unannounced, and this whole thing could blow up in your face. And it would just kill me to see a thing like that happen. So my suggestion is you lay low for a while. I'll have someone escort you to the plaza. I already told Jean-Pierre to give you all the room service you want. And as North's best friend, I'd be more than happy to show him this tape to pave the way for you. Thank you, Winchell. Oh, yes. You're a real friend. I do what I can. Bring the car around for North's folks. Yes, sir. Consider it done. You know, you're doing very well for a sixth grader. Eh, I caught a few breaks. How I was, uh... And I'm take the tape down to editing. Colonel Mustard yeah. in the study with the rope. I don't have any of those. Neither do I. Me neither. neither. Let's see. <laughs> Colonel Mustard in the study. And here's the rope. I was gonna <laughs> say, right. Good job, kitten. Can we play again? No, yeah. you guys have to hit the set. Come on, you got a big day tomorrow. You don't want to be tired for the carnival. Your mom's you? right. Everybody run upstairs to bed right now. Let's go. Okay. See, good night, Mom. Good, good night. night. Good night, honey. Good night, North. Good night. Good night, night. Mom. Night, night. 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 Brush your teeth before you go to bed. <laughs> Sorry to bother you at this late hour, but I got something important here for a kid named North. What is it? Apparently, it's an urgent message from his original parents. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you. North, honey? Yeah? Can you come down here for a minute? Coming! What is it? North, a man just came by and left this tape for you. He says it's a message from your parents. From my parents? Do you mind if I? Of course not. Would you like to be alone, North? No, that's OK. After all you two have been through, what would you most like to say to your son? We don't want you. How can you say that? He's your son. He's not our son. Aren't you bothered by the prospect of never seeing your son again? Nah, that's OK. Isn't this a gut-wrenching, torturous, emotional experience? Not for me. He's not our son. We don't want you. North, honey, are you OK? Is there anything we can do for you? Yeah. Let me be your son. Finally, North had new parents. Parents who made him feel wanted, secure, and loved. Yet something was still wrong. The Nelsons were everything he was looking for, so why couldn't he embrace them? North needed answers. North, we just don't understand why you're leaving. 
Neither do I. You're all nice people, and I, I'm really going to miss you. But I've just got to be alone. We're going to miss you, too. <coughs> and so will Oliver. North. Here. In case you get hungry on your way to New York. Thanks, Mom. I mean, Mrs. Nelson. Bye. So, with just 24 hours until his Labor Day deadline, no hope of parents, and the prospect of living in an orphanage looming, North felt he only had one option left. He would disappear. Yes, he would disappear. And where better to do that than amidst the teeming, faceless masses of the naked city? Heading into the park. Don't worry, boss. I'm just looking for the right time and the right place. So long, Al. What was that all about? Well, it seems that our young friends had a change of heart. A change of heart? He's left the Nelsons and has decided to grace our fair city with his presence. Oh, no. Well, this ruins everything. Arthur, please, use your head. This is a godsend. It is? Of course. And as we speak, grown-ups across this great land of ours are feeling humiliated. They blame North for all their frustrations. Do you realize how many of those angry parents would like nothing better than to do away with our little friend? And do you know the one catalyst that can give a political movement true cohesion? That's right. A martyr. A genius. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. It, it's absolutely Winchellian. It, it... But for North to be martyred, doesn't he have to be killed by one of those angry parents? Well, maybe we'll get lucky. As North ran for his life, he couldn't help but wonder how his dream of finding the perfect parents had turned into a nightmare. Here. Adam, what are you doing here? Listen to me very carefully. 
I'm not here. You never saw me. We're not even having this conversation right now. Got that? Got what? Perfect. So what are we not talking about? This. What? I don't see anything. Exactly. What you don't see is a tape of the conversation which you had with your parents. I saw it. No, you didn't. Oh, I forgot. I didn't see it. No, you did see it. And this is what you didn't see when you saw it. I see. I don't think you do. Look at the tape. So, how'd you find me? Wouldn't you? He bugged the Nelson's phones. Wouldn't you? Shh. He's everywhere. I've been working for him ever since you left home. You know? Some guy was chasing me with the gun. He was shooting at me. That didn't have anything to do with Winchell, did it? Oh, man. So why are you doing this? I'm not. But if I was, because I think Winchell's going too far. Also, you were always good to me, North. You never picked me last. You never made me play right field. Never forget that. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Oh, man. Adam, I, I just don't feel safe anywhere. Adam? Adam? Can I have a hot dog with just mustard? That'll be a dollar. Out of five. Two, three, four, five. There you go. Where'd you get this? Some bum bought a hot dog for me about an hour ago. Why? No reason. I won't see him no more. This man that walked into a bar. He sits down next to a very beautiful young lady. Before you know it, the conversation turns to sex. He says to her, my darling, do you smoke after you make love? She says, I don't know. I never looked. But I'll tell you one thing. My smoke alarm never went off. <laughs> Good night, folks. You've been great. Thank you. Kid with the tape? Yeah. Good. Come on in. I want to try out my new VCR. Well, how did you know? What's that, kid? Well, I just came to see it because I, I thought you looked familiar. Of course I look familiar. I'm almost famous. Joey Fingers, nice to see you. And you are? North. Always been one of my favorite directions. Malamar? No, thanks. That bad, huh? What? No kid ever refuses a Malamar unless he's wrestling with some pretty heavyweight problems. 
North, we miss you so much. Please forgive us. We made so many mistakes. We should have appreciated you more. If only you could give us just one more chance. We love you, son. We love you very much. Beautiful. Works like a charm. You got some pretty nice folks there, kid. Huh? I said you got some pretty nice folks there. Yeah. I guess so. What do you mean, you guess so? Well, I mean... And what do they mean by give us one more chance? I thought they didn't love me. What are you, nuts? That's just the thing. They didn't always pay that much attention to me. So I left them to find some new folks who'd appreciate me more. I searched the whole world, but nobody was good enough. Not even the Nelsons, who I just left. And they weren't bad folks. But maybe there's something wrong with me. Ah, there's nothing wrong with you. And I'm sure the Nelsons weren't bad folks. They just weren't your folks. You see those people out there? That audience? They paid attention to me. They listened to every word I said. They laughed, they screamed, they applauded. <laughs> they loved me. But do you think that audience is gonna make me a cup of tea if I'm not feeling well? You think they're gonna give me advice when I get in a fight with my best friend? Or, God forbid, I get in girl trouble? Who do you think I'm gonna turn to? I'll give you a hint. It's not that audience. Oh, my God, what have I done? I'll tell you what you've done. You've realized something that takes most people a whole lifetime to figure out. And some people never figure it out at all. That a bird in the hand is always greener than the grass under the other guy's bushes. It's a metaphor used mostly by gardeners and landscape people in general. Hey, kid! Hey, kid! Where are you going? Home. I miss my parents. Well, how are you gonna get to the airport? You got a car? No, I'm 11. All right, then we better take mine. Thanks for everything, Mr. Fingers. Make it Joey. And you're welcome. And remember, kid, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of Miami. Well, what does that metaphor mean? What metaphor? You ever been down there in August? Your balls stick to your leg like crazy glue. Goodbye. And so, North finally found the parents he'd always been looking for. Much to his surprise, they were his own. So it was with a song in his heart and a smile on his face that North prepared to board the final plane that would take him back to the loving arms of those very parents. Where do you think you're going? I'm going home. Not on this plane, you're not. Why not? It says here you're dead. <laughs> but I'm not. How can I be sure? I'm standing here talking to you. I know, and that scares me. And since I don't scare easily, you can imagine how it will affect the other passengers. But I'm not dead. I'm sorry, son, I can't take that chance. Hey, it's North. He's alive. What's he doing here? His plane's headed to his hometown. He's trying to get back to his old parent. It'll ruin everything. Let's get him. Hey! What did I do? Stop it! Some kind of guardian angel? Well, I guess you can say that. Because in a manner of speaking, we at Federal Express feel that we are guardians. Guardians of your most important packages and priority communiques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get me home, will you? Well, you absolutely positively have to be home by tomorrow morning. You've come to the right truck. Man, you don't let up for a second, do you? I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Just tell me what to do, OK? Get in. Federal Express, huh? Okay, thanks. Oh, well. Can I have a word with you? Oh, sure, boss. Remember when you told me North was dead? Yeah. Uh, just curious. What'd you base that on? I can 
only assume that you think this is blood, Al. And if I had an IQ below 24, I suppose I might think the same. But the stain in his cap comes from borscht. Borscht? Yes, borscht. A beef-based soup, Russian in origin, most frequently served chilled with a dollop of sour cream. I make a good borscht. And I'd love to sample it someday. But the point I'm making here, Al, is that unless North's head was filled with this traditional Slavic delicacy, he's not dead, you idiot! Oh, no! This not means now, I'm... Arthur. All right, all right. This just calls for a slight change in plans. I'll take it from here. All right. Sign on the fourth line. What time is it? Well, normally, my answer would be no later than 10.30, but thanks to that jackknife truck on the highway, I'm sorry to say it's almost 10 of 12. We'll, we'll be happy to refund your... No, uh... that's okay! Trister summer was an enjoyable one. Where are my folks? Well, they're at a safe place. Where the hell are my parents? North. Did you say the word hell? Why, the summer's really broadened you. Winchell, I've got exactly ten minutes to find my parents. And if you don't tell me where they are, I'll show you how much this summer's broadened me, little asshole! Why are you smiling? I was just thinking what a beautiful, heartwarming scene it's going to be when you're reunited with your parents at that secret spot of yours. How do you know about my secret spot? I'm a journalist, North. It's my job to know about these things. And as much as I'm enjoying this little chat, shouldn't you be on your way? After all, you're down to... Hey, you still here? Yeah, I must have fallen asleep. Come on. <laughs> 